Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Wednesday. It's May the 7th. This will be our chart lesson for today. And in the end, I believe this is just going to be a trading range day. Um, highs up here just below 170 or 1872, and the lows down here just above, uh, just right at 1861 or so. Uh, the overshoot here, this was a news item right here, and this was, if you caught this, this was a great trade, but there's really no way to get in this other than this up here, and um, unfortunately, I'm ashamed to admit that I missed this trade because I tried to get in with a limit order here. When it, when this broke lower, uh, I dropped my limit order in here, and it didn't get filled, and then the next thing you know, it was gone, and uh, I missed that trade. I really wasn't sure originally I was looking at you know this range right here and uh, with a midline and it looks pretty valid but when it went down here I couldn't you can't dismiss the fact that maybe there's a bigger channel and this is the midline but I just you know just looking at what happened I believe this was the channel and this was just an overshoot and um and the market was just so overdone, there was no way they were going to retest this again once we got back up here. So I still think this was the channel, and this was just an overshoot right here. Uh, but the channel is more like, uh, probably like this right here, and with a nice midline. But once it went lower, you couldn't ignore the fact that maybe it's down here. So, uh, But I believe this to be it, and this just to be an overshoot, this news-related, uh, the the, there was some kind of FOMC announcement at 9 o'clock, and you can see the effect it had on the market. It just dropped straight out. And there's really no place to get in this um, other than right here. Once it went continued lower, you might have got a measured move here and looked for that, uh, possibly to be it. But I could never make it fit really well, so... Um, but that's what I see in the end. I think it's just a range day. Uh, we had a trend down that got overshot. Then we've had a trend up, and it was overshot. And uh, we got the break here, and now we're moving to a new high or trying to make a retest or whatever. So that's what I see is the overall day. There's some smaller trends in, in here. There's actually one working down right here as well. And you might have thought about going short right in here on these two little double corrections, but I just think it's really risky. And, um, you know, I just think if you didn't get in up here, and this is not a great setup. Notice that, let me make this a little bigger. Notice that that's the first entry. Uh, there's really two legs up. You can kind of see the move up, the little correction, the second leg up. So, and it's a breakout pullback short. Uh, it's not a very good setup. Uh, if you draw the your little correction, you know, your little trend here, there's no break yet or anything. Uh, so I was looking, because of that, I was going to try to use a limit order just in case it went a little bit higher on a retest. And I just missed that one. So I hope you got in on it, but uh, it was pretty sad watching that go without me. And I wanted to enter in here so badly, but uh, I know better. And uh, this time it worked out, but uh, next time you try it, it won't work out. And most of the time it won't work out, so it's not a high probability trade. And you can see we're still working on the retest here. Um, so I just say you got, you just about got to avoid it. So, um, but anyway, let's go back uh, to the star of the day. We had a trend working up here. When I came in, we were we were on this way down here. Uh, I know at least one trader got caught going long on the second entry right here, but if you drew this properly, which is really more like that right there, um, you already had your break here. It's during the overnight. Sometimes you can't count those, but there's two nice legs up to a new high. This thing was way overdone. Uh, this is not a very good setup. If you're drawing this little channel here, there's no break yet. Didn't come till here. And you actually got a second entry long counting off the lows here. But I think it was too risky to go long because you already had your, um, you know, your channel break and new high. Uh, but when you got a failed second entry short there, 
Uh, that's a nice trap. Just go long right there. And, you, you know, you figure we're probably going to retest that high anyway uh, if it continues up. And that was a quick, easy move there. So that was the first trade of the day. And then, of course, we made the double top and we worked down. Um, I didn't see any shorts in here. There's actually a channel working here. There's your first break. But you got this double bottom right here. So I don't think you want to go short right there. Um be a little bit risky uh, there's not much room i think it would have worked if you had have gone short there let me just look at it it's not a real good signal bar either 67 and a quarter and you see it got just enough so i'll tell you what i'll do i'll go ahead and make that one green just in case but usually this is starting to look rangy you know when it bounced here so when it starts to look like a range the middle area is the part that can be so suspect and a lot of times you'll get chopped up in there. So I, you know, I think that's fairly aggressive if you did go short right there, but it does fit the criteria and there's not really enough room here. So that might've kept you out. But when it bounced here again, I liked going long um, for sure, because now it's looking like a trading range and I really thought we'd probably head back to the other side. <clears throat> But we turned down again right here. Now you now you need to draw your trend line. And originally I had it a little bit higher here. And that's probably still okay. Um, just like so. And um, so I don't, I don't think you can go short right there. Uh, that's really bullish. And then suddenly it's bearish. And notice we make, now we've made, a, um, you got a double top. Now you've made a lower high. And you shoot down and you make a lower low and then you turn back. That's a second entry short, a breakout pullback short. I like that one. Um, even though it's right there, it's a breakout pullback short. And that's the only way you're going to get in those. And that's a very bearish bar. And that's a nice bearish move down. And um, I think these are probably the two measured legs here. But you can't discount the fact that you got leg one right there. And so I was looking for leg two. And so that leaves you plenty of room. And we actually went further than that. So uh, nice, easy move. And there was a chance that there's a channel here now, too. If you were drawing, if you were kind of drawing this across those lows right there, uh, even if you dropped it down, it still kind of fits right across there. So uh, that might have alerted you to this opportunity here but uh, you know there's nothing that fits really perfectly in there and after the fact it's easier to see uh, after you get this swing here then it's easier to put all this these pieces together uh, but this one was just not clear so but I like this one second entry short you're looking for the next leg down um, then you get this correction we already talked about it this really confirms this trend line trend channel there's no real good setup. Uh, hopefully you caught that one. If you didn't, um, and really this should be green. Uh, you know, it's right on the board. Actually, it's right on the border being green because it does confirm that trend line and it does turn down real, real strongly there. But if you didn't get in that um, with a stop, you probably didn't make this trade because I tried to use a limit order and I couldn't get in it and it went off without me. So unless your chart sets up a little bit differently, and, um, and while I'm thinking about it, I get that question every single day that people's tick charts don't look like mine. Well, what you have to understand is time-based charts are static. Every five-minute chart will look exactly the same. But tick charts are not static like time-based charts. They're based off the ticks or trades. And so nobody's tick chart, you can't make them look exactly the same. I don't care if you have the same data provider, whatever, you, yours might be real close, but you're never going to get them to be the same. So don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. Your, but uh, your bars, as long as your patterns are the same, that's the main thing. You got the equal number of bars and your patterns look real close. That's all that matters. Your, your bars are never going to look like mine. Some trades will look good, look real nice on mine and won't look too good on yours. Other trades will look great on yours and won't look so good on mine, but it all works out in the wash. I've used every data provider, I won't say every, but I've used a dozen of them, half dozen of them. And 
it doesn't matter which chart I trade from or which data provider, I still see the same setups. And uh, one might be look better on one chart than the other, but that's just the way it goes. So don't worry that much about tick charts. If yours doesn't look like mine, that's okay because that's you're not going to get yours to look like mine. So hope that makes sense. But uh, uh, you know, I get that question every day, and and um, you know, I so I thought it was worth mentioning it again. I'll try to mention that from time to time. But nice move here. This was the beauty of the day. And dead gummit, I didn't get any of it. I'm still mad at myself. But hey, that's a learning opportunity because you can't look back at trades like this. And as tempting as it was to enter in here, I didn't. Um, and the reason being is because that's what usually burns you. You see these moves go without you, and it makes you antsy, and you're feeling like you're missing out, and you start chasing the trade. And as soon as you chase it, it will reverse on you. And look what happens if you got caught low down here. This never comes back. And in a few minutes, you know, and a little bit later, it's, you know, 20 points higher. And so you cannot uh, chase trades. Because even though it would have worked today, chasing these trades right down through here, next time you try it, it will not work and you'll get burned. So trust me on that. Uh, next trade is there's a two-legged correction back to the EMA. That's fairly bearish. Um, we didn't know if there was an equal movement. The next line was going to be a little further. As you can see, it was going to be a little further down here. So I was looking for it to go, maybe go on down. But either way, you get a nice um, setup here. If you waited on this bar, you needed to use a limit order. Uh, if you didn't, you probably didn't get filled. I don't think it would have worked on that bar. Um, entry would have been 56 and a quarter. And it would have come up short. Uh, I think if you use the the first bar, which is really the signal bar, 56.75. Hey, you, you got out of that even with a stop. But I used the limit. I waited on it to break. I dropped the limit order here, and it moved on down really quickly it took it a minute to go through my order um, if I remember right but uh, worked out pretty good but then it reversed and this is this is not really a failed second entry short it's close enough so you might have even but the fact that these were two up down bars and this was inside uh, I don't think you really want to go long there uh, but when you get this pull back right here you actually get your trend line off those first couple and it fits up here at the top if you drag it up here. And then when it pulls back here, I think it was okay really to go long above this bar. Let me get this back off here. It's not a very nice signal bar, but on a bigger picture, it's a first entry, pull back, second entry. It's two measured legs up that fail. And you're looking for prices to at least come back to this trend line anyway. So I think you can go long right there. Um, without any issues, uh, it's a basically what I guess what I'm trying to say is it's a failed second entry short uh, on a, on a bigger picture, and it's pretty easy to see that one. And then I'd be looking for a measured move similar to that leg right there. And this is really where the uptrend starts right here. Um, and if you measure that first leg, let's just measure it. It's, you know, I'm just eyeballing it. I've done this long enough. I don't even measure them half the time unless I'm waiting on the target to look and you can see it went a little higher than that. So that showed you the mark and that broke the trend. A measured move was really right there to the trend line, but then it breaks through. If you wait on a second entry, it comes here and you really could have gone short right there. Um, I don't know why I don't have that one marked, but you really could have gone short right there. Um, this is a double top basically, and this this is kind of a reversal bar, and you're still looking for prices to retest the low. I think that's why I didn't um, mark it because we had this overshoot, and a lot of times um, prices will just keep on going. But you see it tried a few times to come lower, and then when it hit this trend line, it, it was the end of it. it. It reversed out of there, and you can see there was some hesitation here, but once it got going, people realized what's going on, and they're jumping all over it so and just remember that rule uh i don't probably say this enough but anytime you get a huge move like that that's news related 
usually when the next hour or two, it will take it all back and the market kind of resets. And that's pretty much what it, and not only it take it all back, it took it all back plus some, but look where the day is pretty much ending right here, still within that range. I mean, in the last hour or two, we've pretty much been trading right around that same level where the news started. So, and that's fairly common. So it doesn't always happen. Nothing's 100% in trading. So um, make sure you understand that. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that one uh, red because you are looking for the for the retest. And there are two legs up right there. And there's a, a little bit of a failed second entry long. And then it pulls back and it tries to go higher again. Then you got people trapped. And notice it's a second entry long counting off the lows. First entry. Here's your new low, pull back first entry, pull back, and it kind of goes higher there, turns down, and it went higher first, so just put your stop there, easy trade, and then it comes back up, and now this looks like a trading range, and it turns down again right there, notice the closes are lower than here, and the highs lower, um, just, you know, that's a second entry short, new low, first entry, pull back second entry, easy trade and then it gets hung up right and you should have had that trend line drawn off those first two swings and it hangs up right there goes higher pulls back goes higher again and uh, you really uh, might have considered going long above this bar and if you did that's okay uh, it's a first entry though no matter which way you count but when it turned back down again and then went up and made that little double top when it broke above there that's really a second entry and if you go to a smaller chart you'll see two legs with a second entry long there so it was better to wait on it but no matter how you entered in there that was okay and you might have used a limit order uh, if you waited on this bar it may not have filled but when this one broke higher it was a good one to use a limit order on uh, but there's always that danger and notice how this is almost reversed you get the big move here I mean it's look we're chopping around kind of a rangy and then you get the big move down it comes back and it's chopping around kind of rangy and then you get the big move up. i mean it's almost a mirror reverse and you know that's not uncommon uh, it's kind of like a repeat pattern but it's in reverse so that's a little more complicated to see without some experience but that's that's what it is you might you could almost probably fold this back on itself fold this in half and then fold that over and it probably fits right on top of each other and you know don't don't put a lot of stock into that because that's a little more complicated and I don't want to confuse a lot of people but it's it's a mirror it's a repeat pattern in reverse and that you know that's just as that happens just like repeat patterns happen so then you're uh, you've got this big move up and it's obvious this thing's going higher now I'd be looking for my measured move Definitely from here to here, but probably this whole move because that's a nice correction. And that's so I'd probably look for that whole thing on the move right here. But I'd start with the first, the second part of that leg, like I just showed you. And if you kept going higher, I'd look for it to go something like that. And notice this too that's exactly where the reversal really starts. You're still going higher until here and that's the first lower low and that's kind of where the reversal goes so we overshot that but that was a nice target area it went a little bit higher but the market was overdone now to the upside just like it got overdone to the downside um, so um, chance to enter here it's a little more aggressive it is right off the trend line if you drew that trend line but when it ticked back again and then turned up guess what that's a trap it's a failed second entry uh, short notice the new low you're climbing higher first entry pull back second entry it's a breakout pull back long and look at it go and you you might have even considered going long above that although you may not have caught that either because it just took off this this all happened in about 10 seconds all a lot of that movement but what it is is they're there they've caught a lot of people short and all these people that got short in here and the ones that got short here they all got food and they got to exit now and there's probably still a lot of stops from people that got short right in here and they're running them now and that's what makes this thing shoot up like that um, 
and really at that point I had this a little bit higher off that high and you had a lot of room there but looking at it after the fact I think it's probably more like that right across there notice that gap right there that you'll see prices gap um, support and resistance like that on a fairly regular basis usually when you see a gap like that and when I say a gap, notice that prices closed on their high and then opened on the low. There's they, the bars do not. There's no overlap. Look how most all bars have at least a tick or something that overlaps, and those two have no overlap. That's a gap. And um, if you look around for those, when you see them, there's one right there, and they're generally going to be there's some kind of strong either a trend line or a flat. There's some kind of support or resistance there. And, you know, you'll see that a lot. So just, just be aware of that. And you come up here, you get the break, you get a new high, and then you test it again. And here we go. It broke out higher first and then turned. And it went out the other side all on one bar. So you could just wait on a stop right there since in case it went on through and just use a stop. But because it wasn't a real good signal bar and there's a little bit of overlap, I waited on it to break, and I liked using a limit order there, and it did get filled all the way back, uh, as far back as that closed. And usually I won't go much further back than the colored part of the bar, um, regardless of which direction, because that's usually a good spot. But you're taking a chance sometimes, you know, by, you're trying to be conservative by using a limit order and get a little better entry. But at the same time, by being conservative, you miss trades like this right here. So it doesn't always pay. You know, when it works and you're right, it pays off good. And when you're wrong, you know, it, it can hurt you. And, you know, I've missed a great trade there by being conservative. So be careful with that. And then you get another move back. Um, this is a two-legged move. Notice the new low. It pulls. It goes up pulls back and then you get a little measured move up but the big thing is you get that reversal bar right there and uh, now you've got a new high first entry long pull back second entry long you're going lower from there uh, that's usually going to be a great place to get short and it, it did it took it a little while to get going and then you get a little breakout pull back short here uh, I circled this one in green. If it would have ticked higher, I would have liked it even better, but because it didn't, but look how bearish that is. That's just like a breakout pullback short. It's close enough. Uh, I still liked it, um, So, but I did draw it in green for the reasons I just discussed. It's a little more aggressive um, because you're going short at these lows, but you've overshot this channel quite a bit, and you're, you've got, you know, the odds are you're coming down to this other trend line and that's exactly where it's heading and it bounces right there then it kind of breaks through um, I didn't like getting long in here because there's been no break of this yet and this does look like a, a trading range day so we could have just went straight on down here so you got to be careful uh, you know even though we had a bigger channel working up right now this channels this is what's happening so this is kind of taking precedence especially since it's in hold here and you got a second entry long here but again look at that signal bar and, and you really don't have a close outside of that yet and then it breaks higher on a second entry long and fails and gives you a second entry short uh, this one went out the top of that bar first then you know I just put a stop right there quick easy move and this one runs all the way down for your new low and now you've been working this way again and you know, if you're still trading, you probably got a trend line right up through here like so. It's probably more like this. Maybe even like that. And you get the break right there, a couple legs up to a new high, and now you're trying to sell off. So let's just see how this fits on the upper side. fits pretty well um, looks pretty valid to me at this point so that's what I see working up there but somebody else sent me uh, a quote they asked me a question they sent me this and they had this pretty much correct but then they're drawing a trend line down through here and they didn't know where they should be looking for shorts or longs 
at the moment this is this even though you got the bigger channel working up and this is the first break you got to go with the most recent price action and that's this channel here and it's holding well and uh you can see you're kind of in middle of no man's land here so either just don't trade either skip it or you know or go with the most recent one and you're going to look for a retest there there's a failed second entry long there's different reasons to like that short there because uh, you're looking for this retest and then probably a attempt to retest the high and you see we still didn't get there on this bigger channel but the range is probably maybe taking precedence and we may not get there and it's late in the day it's two o'clock and the volume is probably slowing down and all the big guys are probably done for the day but if you back out again and that was the last trade I marked uh, was this one here but if you back out and look at it again it looks like a range day and it looks like you know with an overshoot and in the end I think it's just a range day and I mean this was a spectacular move here hope some of you caught some of it uh, big thing is I hope you didn't get burned by it um, but even you know we, when this started there were no real surprises because you had that trend line right there so nobody should have even if you didn't catch the move down you shouldn't have got caught off to the long side uh, you might have thought about getting long on this failed break lower but that would have worked and you would have already been out so nobody should have got burned on this move right here. If you did, you're not reading it right, or you were being too, you were gambling and being too aggressive or something. Uh, because there's no reason, even if you took the failed break lower here, uh, that you wouldn't have scalped out. You, you, you know, there was no reason to be caught short right, or long right here. So I hope that makes sense. And that's really about it. We, we got almost 30 minutes worth. There were a couple other charts I held. Uh, let me just look at them real quick and see if there's anything worth uh, discussing. I'm on pop. Okay, a trader sent me something. He actually saw this move right here. Um, he doesn't give me a chart that I can uh, that I can actually move over here to show you though. Um, says, wow, it really pays off to see those traps as they're setting up just a minute ago, a second entry short in the uptrend, had its signal bar tick below the previous bar to 1866.50. I said a buy stop above that bar just in time as prices rocketed up, sweeping, sweeping me into the trade on the failed second entry short in the uptrend. I've never had a 10 second scout before. It's kind of exhilarating. Uh, you bet. And, and as you learn to see these, once you learn to spot them, You'll get better at this and you'll catch more of these, but that was a beautiful trade. And obviously I'm not the only one that saw it. So here's another nice chart. And guess what? Um, the gentleman that sent me this just basically said, wanting to know if he had the channels right. The red circle area, I missed that opportunity. Uh, well, guess what? I missed it too. And I had, you pretty much got exactly what I had. So uh, but he missed that one just like I did, probably probably following the rules. And But that's what they do to you. So don't let this discourage you if you miss it. This was a, you followed the rules and you did the right thing. So uh, it's what I had to tell myself because it, it every time I look at that, it just irks me that I missed that trade. But guess what? They'll do that to you again and give you a bar like this and you'll try to jump in and, and it will reverse on you in a blink and you will lose money. And you know, this stuff will work occasionally, but it works just enough to trick you into getting fooled. So don't don't worry that you miss that, just like I can't worry about it. But yeah, you're you're looking at things uh, pretty closely. I, you know, you see this bigger channel here and I'm not gonna say this is not correct. Uh, I didn't quite see it that way. Uh, let's go back to my chart. I saw it a lot tighter, and um, I think you had to go with this early stuff as your trend. Let me just draw it off mine. And even if you use that, you still get the break and the couple legs up. So, yeah, I think you saw it properly. Um, you still got to the same place I did. You got your break and a retest, a couple legs up, tried to get to a new high, and then you reversed. 
and you did see this trade. You saw it as being a little aggressive, just like I saw it as being a little aggressive. So very good. You got the channel working down here as well. Very good. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. And and also, I like the idea that you recognize the support from the 25th. That would have been a good place to be looking for a bounce. I was looking for one right in here, and there was another little bit of support just slightly lower than that that was a little further to the left that I was looking at too, maybe. Uh, but uh, that's 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 really good. I mean, you're seeing it. So, and let's see if there were any more. Seemed like there was one other chart that maybe. Somebody else sent me their chart, just asking me um, what I thought about it. Just basically saying thanks. They've learned a lot over the last couple of years. Uh, Trading went pretty good at two easy scalps. Uh, he actually tells me I got I can show his chart, but he didn't send it where I could. Uh, I don't think I can download this one or, or take it off of the. I can, but I'm not going to go. To okay, here's his chart, and you can see he's he's seeing. And I actually sent him a note and told him that he was seeing it fairly well. And did he look at my mid-morning chart, or was it, did he get this on his own? And he, he said that he got this on his own. So he saw the first one, just like me, and the retest, and then he caught this trend right here coming down, and he impressed me that he saw the little range right here as well, and he's got this trend line right. And you see, you go back and look at... Uh, my chart and you can see the same thing you see the little range this i left this a little lighter because this was like a temporary thing he had this little range he's got the bigger one so yeah uh, i mean pe people are getting this stuff and uh, you know he's learning it uh, looks like uh, he went long here when he should have been thinking short there he went long here, but that was a good place to go long right there because it's right off the trend line, right off the low. So I like that one. Uh, and he he actually looks like this one would have worked. And at this point, you, this doesn't really look rangy, but the thing is, you got to realize you got this downtrend channel, and this is the first break. And so until you get some reason not to go short, you're still really looking for shorts. Uh, I can see why you went long here, and I like that. And I also know why you went long here, and I like that. So very good. Um, even this one, I don't like this one as much. Uh, but at that point, your high is up here, and you really don't have a range yet. So yeah, you know, did I even mark? Let me. I didn't mark that one, and the reason because um, looking back at my chart, uh, I realize now that I was at this point. This didn't look like a range. But the bias was still down because we don't have any retest. Uh, oper you know, we haven't tried to retest the lows yet, and you're looking for that. So um, that's the reason I didn't mark that one. And I just, you know, that was would be a reason to stay out of that one. Had this ticked lower, let me make this a little bigger. Had prices, see this real negative bearish bar right here. If prices would have broke below that and then turned up, uh, I would have liked that one better uh, because you would have had that short trap because I guarantee that would have trapped people short because that's a very bearish bar and a lot of people would have still been looking. I probably would have got, if that would have broke lower and turned up, I might have gotten trapped short there. So, but then you get the better short right here. And uh, so that's what... Uh, that's the way I was looking at it anyway. That was my thought process. Just remember, this bigger channel is in play here, and this is the first break. And the odds are you're going to usually get a, uh, a retest, or you're at least going to try. And you can see, even though we couldn't get lower, they tried two more times to go lower before they finally gave up. And that's the double retest rule. Even though this went a little lower each time, it still failed in the end, and you can see the result of it. Man, they fooled everybody, 
or they fooled a lot of people. I won't say everybody because they didn't fool everybody, but they fooled a lot of people. They fooled the ones, the weak traders that are just looking to jump in anywhere where they think the, you know, the think they know where the market's going but don't have a clue. So anyway, long less than a day, 34 minutes worth. I'm going to wrap it up. It's a good trading day. Even if you miss this, there was still lots of opportunity. And um, it was a pretty good trading day. So hope you had a good trading day as well. Hope your week's going good so far. We'll be back to do this tomorrow. Uh, this is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.